And then we went from this story that had been broken by the BBC to another story that had been broken by The Sun about a third person coming forward to complain about text messages that they'd received from the same presenter. So you have this very odd position, which is the sort of Sun journalists and the BBC journalists weirdly working, sort of competing, but working in the together, same circle the together. And you have the organisation, the corporation, if you like, on a different setting. Now, in one way, we should be very pleased with that. We want to have Chinese walls between the editorial side and the management side. But there is something a bit um, a bit distasteful, I think, about if you know this stuff about a colleague, why isn't your first duty to then go to HR or to go to a senior manager or to say, I think this is going on, rather than to turn it into a news story? I mean, the question is, if the sun hadn't gone, would they have done that story on their own colleague without actually going first to somebody within the organisation, within management, to try and understand what was behind it because otherwise every single complaint that goes through a news organisation could be turned into a news story. Well, especially if there's no illegality. Right. And the BBC story yesterday did not contain, as far as we were told, any suggestion of illegality. It contained the suggestion that someone may have been rather abusive or used expletives and the person involved felt rather threatened. I've used expletives before. I don't know about you. Well, <laughs> my mum listens. Name, I would never name, use expletives. Name me an occasion when you don't <laughs> yeah, use expletives. You're sweary mateless. I'm not surprised about <laughs> not, that. Honestly, you'd have been sat months ago if it, that had been the bar. There was no suggestion of any illegality in what the BBC's own report came up with last night. And if there is no suggestion of illegality... And it's a presenter being a bit rude to someone who was on a dating app or messaging with or whatever it happens to be. Then that's people's private lives. Yeah, where, where does that cross into the a public story. interest yeah. and the lead story? And if you had rung up and said, I've had a very odd exchange with a BBC presenter and he's been rather shirty with me. Yeah, I'm not someone sure. Someone would shrug made... their shoulders and go, oh, Sorry well, about that. there you are. Sorry about that. But it's not the lead story. And the trouble is that it has the, the, the magnifying effect is it almost looks like there is now a pincer movement to try and end this person's career. Now, that might be completely untrue and they might just be going about their journalism in the way that journalism is done. But once you've got the corporation on the one hand, sort of talking about, you know, stopping for a police investigation and you've got the BBC sort of on the other pincer arm saying, and we found this and we found this and there might be this it starts to look a bit more concerted than they probably realise. The News Agents. This is a Global Player original podcast. 